Hey, what's up guys, Jakey here. Today, I'm gonna to be going over the best settings for the Razer Viper V3 Pro to get the best performance and battery life out of your mouse. So let's get right into it. So starting off, I highly recommend that you download the Razer Synapse beta version, and you can just get that by Googling Razer Synapse beta. The reason I recommend the beta version of Razer Synapse is because I feel like it runs a lot smoother and it also takes up less resources on your computer when you have it open. So I just recommend using the beta version. It has not crashed on me at all. Whereas with the original Synapse, the original Synapse does crash on my computer every now and then. So overall, Razer Synapse beta is just a better version of Razer Synapse. So I highly recommend going with that. We're just gonna click on the first link here and we are just gonna click on download and then install Razer Synapse. After you have it installed, you can run it. And now we have Razer Synapse open and you can see here that I have my Razer Viper V3 Pro connected. So first things first, we want to make sure that our firmware on the Razer Viper V3 Pro is up to date. And all you need to do is go to this website right here. I will leave a link to this website in the description below. But after you come here, all you need to do is go down to Mice and Mats and then scroll down until you see Viper V3 Pro. You're going to click on that and you're going to click on download next to the firmware. The current latest one as of this video is the version 1.11.01. You're just gonna click download on it and it's gonna download this exe file. Now we're gonna run the firmware updater to make sure that our mouse and dongle are completely up to date. So after you have it run, you just click on next and then it will tell you to select the device you wanna update. We're gonna update both the mouse and the hyper pulling wireless dongle. So you're gonna click on the first one here and then click next. And then you're just going to follow all the instructions on screen. I'm already on the latest firmware, so I don't need to update it. But if you are not on the latest firmware, then all you need to do is follow the instructions on screen to update your mouse. But yeah, after you have your mouse completely updated, we're now going to go into Razer Synapse. Now that we have Razer Synapse open, we're just going to click on our Viper V3 Pro right here. And we're going to start off with the first tab. So on the first tab here, there's nothing really in terms of optimizing performance, but for the indicator LED, I do prefer having this on battery warning only just because I don't like seeing the LED light up uh, other than when the battery is low. So I can just know when the battery is low on the mouse and when I need to charge it. So I just put it on battery warning only. For the next tab here on the performance tab, this is where the bulk of your changes are going to be done. So for sensitivity, this is where you choose your DPI. I don't use any DPI stages. I only use one DPI stage. So I turn the sensitivity stages off. And then down here, I make sure I set this on 1600 DPI. 1600 DPI on paper is better than 800 DPI just because there's less pixel skipping. But in real world use, you're really not going to notice that. So if you do want to use 800 DPI, go for it. It is at the end of the day, personal preference. I prefer 1600 DPI though. So that's what I set my mouse at. Down here for sensitivity matcher, I recommend just not touching this at all. There is no need to match your DPI to another mouse. Up here for polling rate, I like to play on 2000 hertz polling rate. And now a lot of people ask me about this. They ask me why I don't play on 4000 or 8000. And the reason for that is because of battery life, but also because anything above 2000 hertz polling rate really is not noticeable and will not make you play better in game. So Optimum Tech actually made a really good video going over all of this. And so I will leave a link to his video in the description below where he explains that anything above 2000 Hertz is really just not noticeable. And you're really not going to get any real world benefits from going above 2000 Hertz polling other than just draining your battery life on your mouse really fast. And so that's why I stay on 2000 Hertz polling. Now, one thing I do change is the Windows pointer speed. And the reason I do this is because I don't like having 1600 DPI on my desktop. I find it a little bit too fast. I like having 800 DPI. And so what I do is I change this from six out of 11 to four out of 11, which basically feels the same as 800 DPI, but I still get all of the benefits of 1600 DPI. Now changing this pointer speed in Windows will not affect your sensitivity in games like Valorant because Valorant has raw input and raw input ignores all of these settings right here. So if you're playing a game with raw input, you don't have to worry about it. But if you are playing an older game that does not support raw input, um, then this will affect your in-game sensitivity. So that's something to keep in mind. Also, while you're here, you might as well just make sure that you uncheck Enhance Pointer Precision. All right, guys, going into the Power tab, I'm pretty sure I left all of this default. Um, wireless power saving is on 5 minutes, and then low power mode is on 20%. And I'm pretty sure that's just the default values. Moving on to calibration, I set the tracking distance on the mouse to the lowest it will go, and I've had no issues whatsoever. I would recommend you either go low or medium. 
Um, I don't really feel a difference between these two, so I just keep it on the lowest. And that's pretty much it. I don't use any of this asymmetrical cutoff or anything like that. I just put this on the lowest here and that's pretty much all I do. And then after I set all of these settings, I just close out of the software by right clicking in the taskbar here and exiting. Um, you wanna make sure that Razer Synapse does not launch with your computer. So you wanna go into the settings here and just make sure that auto launch is unchecked um, because we don't want Razer Synapse to launch with our computer. We would just want all these settings to save onto our onboard memory on the mouse and then we want to close out of Synapse. The only case where you do need to leave Synapse open is if you're using the auto switch polling rate when in game. If you have this turned on and you are and you have it set so that the mouse automatically changes polling rate, then you will need to leave Synapse open so that Synapse can detect whether or not you are running a game. But that's pretty much it guys. Those are the best settings for the Viper V3 Pro. If you guys enjoyed this video and it helps you out, make sure you leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.